Hundreds of years ago, the samurai and the ninja battled across Japan, and these two fascinating ways of combat have been at odds ever since. The Shredder, the sharp and shiny arch-villain of the Ninja Turtles. And Silver Samurai, the mutant swordsman who can slice through anything. He's weird as an arm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Beneath the streets of New York City, a secret battle wages between four humanoid turtles and a ninja covered in blades known as the Shredder. A kitchen utensil? Many legends surround the Shredder's origins. Some say he's the reincarnation of an ancient Japanese warrior. Some say he's an alien disguised as a man. And some say he's a bumbling idiot who sounds like Uncle Phil. But I don't want to conquer this place. I want to conquer hers. Either way, every legend agrees on one thing. He's an absolute badass. Before he was called the Shredder, he was a Rokusaki, a member of the Japanese ninjutsu foot clan. He trained alongside his rival, Hamato Yoshi. They weren't just rivals in martial arts, but in the search for love as well. They both pined for the lovely lady Tang Shen, but unfortunately for our future Shredder, she only had eyes for Yoshi. Amano Yoshi, not the dinosaur, that'd be weird. Jealous, Orokusaki attacked Yoshi, but in his rage, accidentally struck down Tang Shen. <laughs> Leaving Yoshi and his beloved for dead, Saki took over the Foot Clan and began a worldwide crime spree under his new name. Now you face the Shredder. I wonder, did, did he mean to name himself after a cheese grater? Speaking of which, if his armor didn't make it obvious enough, Shredder's got a weird spike fetish. This guy's got him all over his legs, arms, shoulders, even his head. That headpiece, the Kuro Kabuto, is a relic passed down through the Foot Clan for over 1,500 years. Forged from the totems of the clan's defeated enemies, it was formed into an alloy that's stronger than steel. Plus, it just looks awesome. Obviously, his armor is also a kick-ass weapon, and he can cut anyone down with the Teko Kagi claws on his wrists. Which literally translates to back-of-the-hand hooks. Perfect for backhanding. It doesn't cover all that much, but he needs freedom of movement because, you know, he's a ninja. Plus, would you want to get anywhere near a guy covered in razors? Yeah, I don't think so. Ninjutsu is comprised of 18 separate disciplines, and Shredder is a master of all of them. This includes stealth, espionage, pyrotechnics, horsemanship, and plenty of weaponry. Yeah, like swords, spears, bow staves, and throwing weapons. But it's not like he needs them anyway. He's skilled in unarmed combat, too. Now a master of his craft, the Shredder led the Foot Clan to New York City. Where he found out Hamato Yoshi wasn't quite as dead as he thought. As a matter of fact, Yoshi had transformed into a rat person and was raising four adolescent genetically altered shinobi terrapins. But that's another story altogether. With his hatred reinvigorated, the Shredder swore to end his lifelong enemy once and for all. Every time Shredder fought these Ninja Turtles, he proved why he's the leader of the Foot Clan. I mean, he's strong enough to tear through steel shipping containers with his claws, chop down trees in one sword swing, and throw around mutants several times his size like they're nothing. One such mutant, Leatherhead, weighs well over 300 pounds. Alright, I know that's the official weight according to some toy, but look at him! Compared to the turtles, he should weigh half a ton. Either way, the Shredder survived Leatherhead chomping down on his midsection. The femur, the strongest bone in the human body, breaks at a pressure of about 1,700 pounds per square inch. A normal, unmutated American alligator can bite with a force of nearly 3,000 psi. And Leatherhead's bite is surely stronger. Meaning Shredder should have split in half. But nope, he was back up kicking some leather butt literally five seconds later. The Shredder is a cunning strategist and talented warrior. He's fought eight mutants in combat all at once, disarming every single one of them. What's more, while intimidating an Italian mob boss and his bodyguards, he did this. The most well-trained human eyes are capable of detecting movements occurring in 1 220th of a second, meaning Shredder's Slash could have been even faster than that. But sometimes Shreds needs just a bit more juice to get the job done. Literally, when you see him crack open a green one, he's not doing it to hang out with the boys. 
In times of desperation, Shredder is known to resort to risking it all by consuming mutagen. Transforming him into Super Shredder! He must have drank all of it! It's a Super Shredder! While this form has given him different enhancements in different iterations, it usually grants him immense strength, inhuman durability, and even teleportation in the power to shoot lightning. You know, that's probably because mutagen's not an exact science and it's bound to get random at times. That's true, Boomstick. I did a science! Good job. <laughs> well, he's toughed out a sword shattering against his skin and even falling around a thousand feet onto a steel beam. Man, you'd think this guy would never lose anything, ever. <laughs> but you'd also be super wrong. Shredder has his fair share of downsides. This includes a weakness to garbage trucks. Oops. Newborn infants. Yeah. Babies! Ugh. The power of music. I hate music! A strange fascination with eating his enemies. Tonight I dine on turtle soup. And wood. Jeez, were the 90s always this stupid? Yeah. Thankfully, despite his failures, the Shredder keeps getting back up. Faster, stronger, and much more terrifying. The true battle starts now! In feudal Japan, a samurai wasn't your typical bodyguard. He was trained in the art of war and would only serve the elite upper class. Honor was the samurai's currency. But for the silver samurai, Kenoichi Oharada, currency was just regular money, because that shit's useful. Born into the Yashida clan, Harada was the son of a powerful Yakuza crime lord. Unfortunately, he could never inherit his father's empire for himself, because he was born illegitimately. A bastard. Wow, wait, no need to throw insults around, Wiz. No, the literal definition of bat. Move on. Wiz's judgment aside, without a clear future, Harada decided to, well, become a samurai, because why not? They're pretty cool, right? Unfortunately, the way of the samurai no longer had a place in the present. Harada knew that in a world full of absurd superpowers, he would need to dedicate his life to the art in a way never seen before. He wouldn't just be a samurai, he'd be a silver samurai. Yep. Well, blinged out like exhibits rims, he picked up on a few fighting styles. Not too many, just Bajutsu, the art of horseback, Bujutsu, military strategy, Aijutsu, the sword-based quick draw, Tanto Jutsu, knife fighting, Ninjutsu, being sneaky, Kyujutsu, which is archery, and, well, Jujutsu and Karate Do, which are both forms of unarmed combat. God, how many more Jutsus do you think he can fit in his brain? I didn't even know there were that many. At least one more, Kenjutsu, the art of Japanese sword fighting. After all, what's a samurai without a katana at his side? Dead, that's what. In order to keep living, he had to get really good with swinging that sword. Luckily for Harada, he soon learned he had one of those absurd superpowers for himself. Yep, he's a mutant. Now who's being insensitive? Harada has the ability to generate a tachyon field. With it, he can enhance his sword, allowing it to slice through almost anything. Even ghosts! In real life, tachyonic fields are hypothetical particles with mass, which travel faster than light. A definition which may explain how Harada's cutting ability works. So he uses his power on sharp objects. Well, that's too bad for everybody in Silver Samurai's way, because he carries a lot of them. He's got throwing knives and shuriken ninja stars on hand for long-range attacks. And of course, he always carries that katana. He's wielded many different swords, including the legendary Muramasa Blade. However, he's not too picky about what kind of sword he carries. With his power, any blade Harada carries instantly becomes one of the most dangerous swords on the planet. Harada has one more trick up his sleeve, a teleportation ring. With it, he can warp around the battlefield for unexpected strikes, and it makes for a good getaway. Though he almost lost it once to John Belushi. You know, the guy from Saturday Night Live? Jocelyn told me about it once. It was weird. After years of hard work, Harada was truly a masterful warrior. However, he still struggled to defeat one opponent, the Wolverine. Who killed his dad and got engaged to his sister. 
Ah, the shame combo. Oh, and she was next in line to rule the Yashida clan. Man, a triple. Needless to say, a little myth, Harada challenged his own sister for the right to run the clan. And he won, after she was poisoned by an unrelated third party. Sometimes life just works out, Wiz. I guess a win's a win, and that wouldn't be his last one. He's incredibly deadly in battle. He's so fast he deflects bullets with his sword, and once even sliced a speeding bullet completely in half. In this instance, the gunman was standing 15 feet away when he fired the bullet at approximately 1,400 feet per second. This means that Silver Samurai was able to reach for his sword and accurately cleave the bullet in two in just over one hundredth of a second. Even if he didn't chop it in half, his armor is totally bulletproof. Shoot, it even let him survive a friggin' building falling on top of him. But without his armor, he survived taking a sword straight through the lung and getting run over by a car from... the f***ing Jetsons? He's no slouch on the battlefield either. He's knocked Spider-Man unconscious, shaken off hits from Cannonball, and even defeated Spider-Woman in combat. At one point, he was dogpiled by Daredevil, She-Devil, along with a cheetah and a panther, together likely weighing over 600 pounds in total. And he threw them all off in one big push. And he's always fighting with his number one rival, Wolverine. Speaking of which, while some may boast that Harada is the greatest swordsman in the world, Wolverine's frequently proven to be his better. Yeah, he may be good with his blade, but his battle strategy isn't quite as sharp. Also, his bulletproof armor doesn't cover everything, as seen here. Well, even that was merciful compared to what happened when he went up against the four black samurai. Although Harada defeated them all against impossible odds, he ultimately succumbed to his wounds. And when he arrived in hell, Harada met the devil, who promptly killed him again by cutting off his head and smashing his corpse into mush with a soul-destroying sword the size of a school bus. Damn! Never let it be said, the Silver Samurai isn't hardcore. Last chance, Harada. Yield! The Silver Samurai yields to no man! All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, all this talk of slicing and dicing has got me thinking about a Blue Apron meal. Grandpappy Boomstick always said that nothing in life is better than good food and making something with your own two hands. And Blue Apron is both those things combined. Blue Apron is the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country. All ingredients arrive right to your door, guaranteed fresh and ready to cook. It's better than eating fast food, plus it's affordable. Blue Apron is less than $10 per person per meal. Choose from a variety of recipes and get the meals that sound good to you. The ingredients are perfectly proportioned and the instructions are easy to follow. I mean, even Boomstick can do it. Hey, watch it or you're not getting any of the next meal I make when it arrives. Like the miso butter salmon and lo mein noodles with cucumber and charmed tomatoes. And if you're worried about variety, don't bother. Recipes are not repeated within the year, so you'll never get bored. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash battle. You'll love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron, so don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash battle. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. But right now, it's time for a death battle!
Shredder would go far if he took up darts. Both Shredder and Silver Samurai were incredibly tough, capable of withstanding tremendous amounts of pain. Harada's armor may have been tougher, but it had plenty of exposed weak points which a fighter as precise as Shredder could exploit. Silver Samurai could throw around 600 pounds of people and cats, which is technically stronger than anything Shredder's done, but Shredheads handled equally mighty mutants plenty of times, like Leatherhead. While the Silver Samurai's teleportation ring did make him harder to track, he's always preferred to use it as a means of escaping a battle, not really engaging in one. Even when he did use it during combat, his moves were often predicted by more experienced opponents. This guy likes to come at me from behind. <laughs> Just trying out one of your tricks, Tin Man. Given Shredder's talents in history, it's reasonable to believe he could do the same. Still, with Harada's Tachyon Blade and Shredder's Ninja Precision, they only needed to land one fatal hit to finish the fight. So the real question was, who could land the killing blow first? Silver Samurai's best speed feat, slicing an incoming bullet, clocked in at one hundredth of a second. Shredder's faster than eyesight feat measured at four thousandths, making him over two times faster than Harada. To be blunt, Shredder's fastest known attack was quicker than Harada's fastest known defense proving that Shredder could deal a killing blow first. Or, you know, he could just turn into Super Shredder and beat the shit out of him. I mean, Super Shredder can lift and throw a giant oil tanker like it's a beach ball at a rave. That's probably heavier than 600 pounds of people and cats. Looks like Shredder was too much for Silver to tacky on. The winner is the Shredder. Stick around, we're about to announce the combatants for the next death battle. And if you want to watch exclusive commentary on this episode, click that little box over there and start a first membership trial. Not even you can prevent this.